TVR Tamora doesn't even have to move to make it feel like a real sports car. But it would be a shame not to take it for a little spin. scale at 36 grand but in terms of driver aids it's back with the race bread elise so there's no electric roof no airbags and no abs or traction control to dilute the driving experience which is a bit of a worry because with 350 bhp it's got twice the power of the lotus but for the car that looks and sounds like this who cares Like the Honda, the TVR has its entire interior devoted to the business of driving, with everything cowled round towards me. But unlike its Japanese rivals, I'm delighted to see that the boys from Blackpool have yet to discover the pleasures of plastic. Indeed, there isn't a single piece of it anywhere to be seen. Instead, there's a deluge of leather, aluminium and suede, all centred around these fantastic dials, which in true TVR tradition provide all the basic information in a sort of ass about face way, with the rev counter on the right moving anti-clockwise and the speedo providing as little information as possible. But it's still brilliant, because along with the sound of that engine, you can never forget you're in a TVR. Unfortunately, much as I love the TVR Tamora's outlandish styling and brutish nature, its lack of driver aids and boisterous character won't be for everyone. See you tonight. Okay. W's Z8, as awe-inspiring as the Tamora, while still feeling as focused and as well-built as Honda's S2000. And it has to offer the same sort of top value as the MR2 and MX-5, and have the same sort of pedigree as the Elise. And it needs to be as chuckable as the VX220, and also usable for the odd track day, so it can mix it with the Caterhams and Radicals of this world. And on fifth gear, we agree there is still only one car that can do all of that. That, the Porsche Boxster. It may have been on sale for six years, and it may not seem to know its front from its rear, but nothing we've tested can beat it. Like its sister, the 911, the Boxster can revel in being redlined on a mountain road as happily as it can cope with a daily commute. The interior may not be the most exotic, but it is the most comfortable of all these cars and still feels brilliantly built and entirely focused on driver fun. And let's not forget that it's also the most practical car here with, yes, two boots. OK, at just over £38,000, this range-topping 3.2S isn't exactly cheap. But it oozes so much quality, we all agree it's still great value for money. While Tiff reacquaints himself with Porsche's finest, I'm going to tell you why the Boxster makes the best used sports car in the world. Now, here is one we literally prepared earlier. We found it in the classifieds, fair and square. It's a 97, done 40,000 miles, mint car, full service history, 2.5 Tiptronic, and it's just been sold for 18,500 quid, making it a very cheap car. And hopefully, demonstrating admirably that, believe it or not, there are still used Porsche Boxster bargains out there. So here's the bottom line. In the world of sports cars, this little car is one of the slowest depreciators, one of the fastest sellers, one of the most reliable, one of the cheapest, relatively speaking, to own and buy, and the one that has so little that goes wrong. So here is your handy Porsche Boxster used buying guide. The hood is electric, so make sure it still works, and pre-2003 cars had a plastic rear screen, so check that it's not cracked or yellow, and that the alloys and tyres look like these. 
The single pipe 2.5 or 2.7s are more economical and on average cost four grand less than the 3.2s. In fact, so wholesomely sensible and practical that even your mother would approve. But before you start heading for the classifieds like heat-seeking missiles, Tiff, who should have found a racing circuit by now, is about to remind us what owning one of these rinky-tink little roadsters really is all about. the Porsche Boxster so good. The driving position is just right. The steering wheel, a tad on the large side, one has to say, but it enables you to better see the beautiful dials just underneath them with the rev counter right in the middle. And the fact that there's also a little digital speedo which says I'm doing 65 miles an hour as I turn into this corner and then... <laughs> <laughs> spin off <laughs> but that was me because I was talking to you you see and I got the rear wheels on the grass and well I spun I mean spinning happens especially when you're <laughs> allowed the Anglesey racing circuit to play on but then again there's that lovely engine tone behind you that classic Porsche tone that's actually been tuned so it gives just the right noise without being noisy then there's that handling balance, which, although it's a little bit over the top, is, is generally neutral, it's mid-engine, the steering, communications, everything you could want. You do need to concentrate, obviously, on a circuit. And there's a, a six-speed gearbox, which just flips between ratios. That's where we spun last time, and we nearly spun again. <laughs> and the fact that I could have so much track day fun with only 260 horsepower shows you don't need brutal power if the balance is right. What's so good about Porsche? All I can think is everything. The Honda Civic is all new for 2006 with advanced styling.